when you see a storm that's approaching. As the clouds lower and thicken and the winds begin to blow, there is this sense of awe. Weather is drama on a global stage. It's all the elements out there, the wind, the water, the cold, the heat, all coming together to have its influence on human life. You go back thousands of years ago, people lived outside. They relied on knowing what weather might be coming to be able to grow food or to get out of harm's way. So they started being able to read the clouds. That's how weather forecasting started. But we didn't know exactly what was coming. We didn't know when it was coming. Uh, and we didn't know how strong it might be. Then in 1900, a massive hurricane inundated Galveston with very little forecast warning. There was some evidence that it was out there from ships in the Gulf of Mexico, but no one knew the size, the full strength of the storm, nor where it was heading. It was the worst natural disaster in terms of loss of life in U.S. history. In the last century, forecasting has grown more accurate by leaps and bounds. We had observing systems in aircraft, the advent of satellites able to look at entire storm systems from hundreds of miles above the surface. We had the development of computers and computer forecasting models. These are mathematical equations run on some of the world's fastest computers that take data and some basic laws of physics to generate a more accurate forecast. And that was really a big game changer. But in 2017, modern forecasting was put to the test when Hurricane Harvey threatened the Gulf Coast of Texas. Breaking news, a major hurricane. Harvey appears to be taking direct aim at the coast of Texas. People are... I remember before Harvey made landfall, I looked at the models and we started to see this rapid intensification from a tropical depression to a category four hurricane. And the, really the unusual thing with the models was the rainfall amounts. You know, 30 and 40 inches of rain. And, you know, I looked at it and I, I didn't believe it. Um, it's very rare to, to even suggest rainfall of 10 to 15 inches, uh, much less 40 or 50 inches of rain. I mean, that's just almost unheard of. They're looking at these model outputs of multiple feet of rain, and they have to make the judgment. If I say it's going to happen and it doesn't, people aren't going to believe me the next time around. But if I don't say it's going to happen and it does come to fruition, lives are going to be lost. So every time the models would run and a new run would come out, the models never wavered much from these big totals. And so at that point, it was the realization, we're facing something now that we've never experienced before. We dealt with things with Harvey that I never thought we'd deal with. So almost three feet of rain over a four day period. Horrible flooding, just over a massive amount of area. And even with all the sophistication we have and all the technology we have, there were 36 fatalities and you know, that, that's, that's a lot. So we were asking people to pay attention to the water elevations. But due to people listening to the forecast, people that followed the advice and got out of the areas that they needed to get out of. There was tens of thousands of people who were saved. The Harvey forecast was in some respects a landmark forecast because an unprecedented event over a major metropolitan area was able to be forecast in enough time to get people out of harm's way. When it comes to the future, as we see more severe hurricanes, more severe tornadoes, more severe drought, we've got a more vulnerable population than ever. 
So it is so important to continue to improve our forecasting abilities because the more we know about this complex system, the better forecasts we can make.